Hey, how's it going? So today what I want to do is a camera comparison video. And what I want to do is compare the X2, the X3, and the X4 cameras. And I primarily use these cameras for motorcycle vlogging. So what I'll be doing is mounting the three cameras to the front of the motorcycle. And then sort of as a bonus, we'll get to see the Insta360 Ace Pro because I'll be using that as my helmet cam. Now, just to let you know, this is not gonna be a video about features or technical aspects or showing you how to use the camera or any settings, anything like that. There's a million videos out there that can show you that. And that's not really what I'm interested in. What I wanna see is just side-by-side -side comparison of the results of the video. So I'll mount them all to the front of the motorcycle, go for a ride, and then we'll show different shots from different cameras or split screen and show all three cameras at the same time. But first, I've been watching a lot of vlogs, a lot of YouTube, and it seems like if you wanna make a successful video, there's something you need to do at the beginning of every video. I don't make the rules. Did I do it right? <laughs> Nothing but the finest Folgers drip coffee for me. But before, do anything i do need to fix this helmet i need to reattach the camera chin mount to the front of the helmet here the sticky came undone and it is already about 106 degrees so I'd like to get this done because it's not gonna get any cooler today and here is the Mr. Clean and let's set those cameras down so on the front I have this and the main reason, one of the main reasons why I got this is so I could connect cameras to it. So you can see I have three connections right there. So we can put the three cameras on right like that. So what I'll do is I will put the X2 on that side, the X3 on the right side, and put the X4 right in the middle. And for this test, I'm also going to take off the uh, lens guards on the X4 so that way we don't blame any quality issues on, on the lens guards getting reflections or dust on the lens. Um, let me clean the lenses off real quick though. So one other quick item of interest on here, on the Continental it can be difficult to find places to mount the camera. Like I said, that's why I got this here, so I have something to mount to, because you don't have much handlebar space. And then also on the back, there's not a whole lot to mount to, especially if you have the short tail on here. So one of the other modifications I made to this, let me show you. Uh, take off the side panel. And if we pop the seat, is under the seat, you can see I have mounted this screw mount here. And this is a selfie stick screw mount that I put on there. And obviously it wouldn't work very well like that because you need the seat on the bike. So I do have this second seat in cowl. And this one has a hole in the cowl. So if we get rid of this seat, and you put this seat on it, you can see the hole in the mount matches up right there. You can take your selfie stick and just line it right up with that. And just screw it in like that. And then you have your rear camera mount right there. So you can put your camera right on top. What's nice about this is it stays pretty stable because it's mounted inside and it has the cowl right here just kind of holding it in place as well. 
and you don't have to worry about the stick just kind of like falling down. Now, as I mentioned, it is hot here today. So that's another thing we could test with the cameras to see how well they hold up to the heat. Uh, at the thermostat over there where I said it was 106, now it's reading about 107, 108 degrees. We come over here, the camera is right now, 103 degrees. We look outside, the ground is saying it's 120 right there. Ooh, 133 over on the black. It is saying it's 144, 145. So it is, it is toasty out there. So this will be a good test to see how these cameras hold up in the heat. Of course, I'm not gonna be out riding along though. So I'm just gonna go out for a few minutes, kind of ride around the neighborhood, maybe head outside the neighborhood just to get a few shots and then come on back in. Let's see here. For the settings, what I'm going to do <clears throat> is for the first part of the test, I'm going to set all the cameras to the same exact setting. So 30 frames per second, uh, 5.7K. And the reason for that is just to see how they all compare to each other at the same exact settings to see if there's any real difference there. Uh, I know this, the X4, when it's in 8K, it, it doesn't handle low light very well. And so they recommend you switch to 5.7K in low light. So if you do a lot of recording where you're gonna be indoors or low light settings, or even in sunny days going in and out of shadows, I notice this thing at 8K gets grainy. We'll test it at the 5.7K right now so we can see against each other. And then I'll stop halfway through and then I'll switch this to 8K so that way we can see the best settings to see how they compare and the improvement over the two and the three. So let's get all these recording, recording, recording. That's recording. Get a little bit of sound clap going. So I'm just gonna take a little ride through the neighborhood, get to some comparisons, and then I am, I think I'm gonna head out. And then I'll head out of the neighborhood just because at the exit, there's a few signs that will help maybe show some definition and clarity. So here we're seeing the X2 in 5.7K at 30 frames per second. Now the X3 with the same settings. And now this is the X4. Again, same settings, so I don't expect too much of a difference. Here's the X2, the X3, and X4, all close-up wide shots. All right, let's see if this gate opens. Four out of five times, it doesn't open for a motorcycle. Which it's not now. Which means we'll just have to go out the entrance but right here can right here should be a good test for the cameras as well because of the signs on the gates and right outside of the neighborhood and like I said I'm just gonna take a quick ride down the road here all right let's stop here for a quick second and back that ass up let's get out of the three-way split screen and if we take a look at the X2, we can see it's a bit on the soft side. The trees are pretty blurred, especially at the edges of the video, but no issue reading the resident access only sign. Switch to the X3. We're pointing a bit more at the sun, so getting some glare. The sign is further away, but still looks good. And now the X4. Again, we're shooting at the same resolution, so I don't expect to see too much of a difference. Let's continue. Ride down the road here. We do have signs all along the road, the trees, the traffic, the sunlight. All these things can uh, be some good tests to see how 
the cameras handle it. Here we have a couple of signs on the left and some graffiti on the wall on the right. Now later in the video, we'll come back this way and check out the signs in more detail after switching the X4 camera into 8K. But here we have the X2, the X3, and just a quick note, the color of the X3 is a bit different. I mistakenly had the X3 color set to vivid rather than standard like on the two and the four. Here is the four and you can see a bit of stitching issues up in the power line due to me not switching the settings for the standard lens guards to no lens guards when we took them off earlier. But I will take care of that issue here in a minute and fix the stitching. And finally, we have the Ace Pro, which obviously has a much more narrow field of view but it's much sharper and higher resolution. And moving on, we'll turn on the X2, X3, and X4. Now, you may notice when we swap to the rear facing view, the X2 and the 3 swap sides. That's because we're turning the cameras around, and if we did it, it would look like this, distracting with the cameras visible in the shot. I have my temperature gun here, but it's in my pocket. I'm afraid worried it might fall out. Put it on the inside pocket. Alrighty, back to the Ace Pro for a few seconds to see the resolution and feel the view. Now turning back on the X2, the 3, and now on the 4, you'll notice that it's much brighter. With the X4 set to auto, it tends to overexpose slightly. At the end of this video, I'll show a comparison shot with the X4 brightness manually adjusted so you can see the difference, which I think really helps. See how it looks against this building, this water tower. Maybe some of the mountains and homes off in the distance signs here. How do they look? Normally there will be uh, cars down here, people biking and hiking and going out and well obviously leaving their, their trash everywhere. check these settings and like I said I'll uh, let me hit stop on each one and then I'm going to change the settings on the X4 and something I've had trouble with on the X4 is getting it to stop All right, let me stop the three, but it's not wanting to stop. Oh, there it goes. Maybe you have to press it really fast, and like a hard press doesn't do it. I'm not sure. I'm going to have to figure that out. All right. Let me see the settings on the X4. We'll bump it up to 8K, 30 frames a second. All right, let's start these up again. And they're all recording, recording, recording. All righty. Oh, one thing I should do while we're here, get a temperature reading. So right now, it's saying the X4, 124, 124 degrees, the X3 in the same spot, same thing, 124. Uh, the X2, it's saying 125, 124, same thing. So the ground, 147. All right.
All right, so let's pause and quickly back up again and replay this little stretch from each camera. Here is the X2, and for some reason the stabilization is way off. We're getting a lot of shaking. And if we stop and pause here, take a look at the buildings, construction equipment, the water tower. Now we're gonna get closer and also zoom in at the same time, cutting down the resolution. Take a look at the signs, graffiti, water tower, the truck. Now here we go, same shot from the X3. The stabilization you'll notice is much better. As mentioned, the color profile was set to vivid, but this does give you a good idea of how changing the color settings affects the captured video. Again, take a look at the building, equipment, water tower. Now we'll pause at the same spot. The X3 is mounted on the far side, so we get the other cameras in the shot, but we could still get a good look at this, and it gives you a good idea how objects close to the camera are affected by the stitching. Now for the X4, as mentioned, the auto settings are way too bright. In just a little bit, I'll show you some clips where I manually adjusted and lowered the exposure. Now here, even with the poor exposure settings, we are getting a much sharper image. Here again is the X2 and X3, but the Ace Pro will win the resolution battle every time. Moving on, as we come up, we'll zoom in a bit and pause. So with all 360 cameras, wide shots will give you the best results. Any zooming in, even with the X4, will go a bit soft. But looking at the X2, now X3, I think the X4 looks much better. A bit of manual adjustment on the settings, and I think this shot would go from good to great for a 360 camera. And the great thing about a 360 camera is the ability to reframe and get shots in every direction especially helpful when moto vlogging and you don't always know where the action's gonna be. Now, checking out the vlogger view, each of these cameras will give good results. As we can see here, the X2, the black of my jacket may be a bit dark, so we could adjust the contrast a bit, but still looks good. With the contrast settings on the X3, you can see a difference between my jacket and shirt. And on the X4, we can actually see some details on the jacket and shirt. But up this close with a wide view, all three cameras are going to do a decent job. Now, as we come around this corner, we can check out the skyline off in the distance, the buildings, the mountains. On the X2, the X3, and for the X4, we'll come back to this same shot in a minute and show it again with some manual adjustments. And then here's the Ace Pro helmet cam. So coming up here, we'll check out a few of the roadside signs I talked about earlier in the video when we first started. Okay, here we're stopped with the X2 and we're gonna read the perfectly planned community sign. Then racing ahead with the X3, dog parks, and now the X4. As we check out the two, now three, and back to the four. And the Ace Pro shooting in 4K. Once again, still frames from a video can vary greatly in clarity from one frame to the next, so I may not always be pausing on the sharpest frame. So take that into consideration as you watch. And a little nipple tickle to open the gate. Come on, gates. Open, open. There we go. So for temperature, as we just get back, let's see if these things have changed. Let's say 120, 114, 115. Let's try it on this side. So the X4 in the front, it's saying 130. 
x3, 126. And same for the two. Yeah, the four is just a little bit hotter. All right, let's shut these off. That's the two. That's the three. Four. So it shut off quickly that time, and I just gave it a tap. It seems like if you press it, it doesn't shut off as quick. Let me try turning that on again. Record. So if I press it hard, it doesn't shut off. But if you just give it a, a really quick tap, ah ha ha. I've been wondering what that is. I don't have the long press delete file thing on either because I always worry about like, what if I press the button too long and it deletes a file? So I don't do that jazz. All right, let's see the results. Okay, so I am almost done editing this video. And as I had mentioned, the X4 camera tends to slightly overexpose the video when you shoot in auto mode. Now you can manually adjust the exposure settings in the camera to get better video. And you might say, well, if you knew that, why didn't you just do that in the first place? And that's a good question. And there is a reason. There is something I wanted to show in this video. But I'll talk about that in a second. First, let's take a look at the video that I'm talking about. So here is the original clip with the X4 that we just went out and shot. Now here is a clip I shot a few weeks ago where I had adjusted the exposure settings. We're getting a little more contrast and much better, more natural colors. Now, if we watch this in the split screen, you can really see the difference. The contrast is bringing out a little more detail if we pause and check out the big blue sign and the speed limit sign a little further down the street, we are getting a little more detail. It's especially noticeable with the power lines just above the sign behind the flags. In the overexposed clip, those power lines are completely missing, but visible in the properly exposed clip. And now is just another example when we head into the neighborhood. Once again, the colors look a little bit better. You're getting richer blacks. It just looks much more natural and a much better video. As you can see here, when it switches between the properly exposed and the overexposed clips. So back to the original question, if I knew that the X4 camera had this auto exposure issue, why didn't I fix it before going out and shooting the video? Two reasons. The first one being is I watch a lot of camera review videos and the thing about those videos is they're usually made by experts, meaning they know how to get the best quality out of the camera. Not only that, they know how to also fix it in post and to make their video look perfect and that's the video they're always gonna show, understandably. Now sometimes as an amateur video maker, I buy a camera, I just like to take it out of the box, turn it on and start using it in those auto settings. And maybe sometimes my expectations can be a little bit skewed. Now I know that just means you need to learn how to use it and I understand that. But that brings me to my second reason and this is kind of the real reason was there was some controversy when Insta360 launched the X4. On the day of the release, YouTube was absolutely flooded with camera review videos for the X4 and they all had nothing but high praise for the camera. Now the thing is, every single camera has its pros and cons. And most reviewers will say, well, here's what's good about this camera and here's what's not so good about this camera. When the X4 came out, there was no bad. Everything was good. And not only good, it was basically billed as the second coming of cameras. It was the one camera to rule them all. And I remember watching these videos, getting really excited, thinking this camera, the way it was being presented, would replace pretty much all action cameras, that it was a 360 camera that gave you the quality of regular action cameras. And so I was very excited about it. I placed an order for the camera, received the camera, let's just say expectations were not met. Now, it's not that there's anything wrong with the X4. It performs the way you should expect a 360 camera to perform. The problem was all those videos that came out on the camera launch day were sponsored videos. On top of that, most of them did not disclose that they were sponsored. And there was a little bit of controversy because it came out that kind of Insta360 was even saying, don't say that these are sponsored. So all these glowing reviews came out that talked about all the pros, which there are pros, but they didn't mention any of the cons. So it just kind of set expectations, I believe, unreasonably high. Now, 
I expect there to be pros and cons with every camera. Would I have still bought the camera even if these reviewers mentioned the cons? Pretty much. I mean, I guess you could say because I have six Insta360 cameras. Three of the 360 cameras. I have the Ace Pro. I have the, uh, the One RS. I have one of these uh, Go cameras. So I love the cameras. So I'm sure I would have been the sucker to buy the next one. But I would just have preferred to be able to see a video that I think shows a little bit more realistic expectations of what you can get from the camera out of the box. That's pretty much it. So that's why. So if you have the new X4, I'd be interested to hear what your thoughts are, what your experiences with the camera are, even your advice and your suggestions to get better video. If you're thinking about buying the camera, you know, like I said, if I was to buy it, yes, I would end up buying the camera again, but you have to also think and put into perspective of what are your needs. Any 360 camera is not gonna have the quality settings of the regular action cameras. Depending on the type of videos you make, it might be best to start off with just a high resolution action camera and then get a 360 video as a second camera to get those extra shots or the B-roll or the unique footage you can get with a 360. Uh, people that really need 360 cameras, I think are a lot of like motor vlogging like I do. If you do any action sports, if you need any camera where you're by yourself and you need something that will follow your movements around, the 360 is the way to go. So it really just comes down to your needs. Anyway, if you have any comments, suggestions, feedback, anything, love to hear from you. Leave a comment below. Later. Mm -hmm.